Yo, what is going on guys? It is Derek with Raleigh Restorations back at you again. Today we're going to be doing a full midsole repaint on these 06 Fire Red 3s with an airbrush. We're going to go over some tips and tricks and a few little things you may not have seen or heard about to really nail those details. So let's go ahead and hop into the laundry list of things that we need today. We've got an airbrush. We're going to be using the Jacquard Airbrush White Paint, the Angelus Fire Red, a scoffing pad just to clean up the midsoles after each coat, some cotton balls, an X-Acto knife, midsole magic, or whatever you want to strip the midsoles, some denatured alcohol, a filter, some tooth in, and two different kinds of tape here. So first things first, got to get these midsoles stripped. And in my opinion, there's only one way to do that, midsole magic. You can check it out in the description down below if you're not familiar with the process. I'm not going to show you it again. But realistically, if you want to chip the paint, use acetone, use another stripper, have at it. This is just an option. If you guys support me, I appreciate it. After that, we got to get these taped up. I like to just tape with my fingers as opposed to using the exact knife all the way around just because I feel like I make more mistakes when I make cuts as opposed to actually taking my time and looking where it goes. You'll see I use the exacto knife just on those little edges where it kind of curves. That's just because it's really hard to get that with straight edge tape. And just take a close look here. This is looking pretty good. Pretty good. So for this next part, this is where things get a little bit weird. And you're probably wondering. Why do I have clamps in my hands? We're not doing a re-glue. So a common problem I see with myself and with a lot of others, and I know they probably go back and touch it up, is getting a really clean line along this upper. And that's simply because of the way the shoe is shaped, some of it sticks out and protrudes over this midsole. As you can see, it kind of curves out. So what I like to do is take the clamps and go ahead and clamp this down and just hold that back and tape that line really tight so I can see the whole entire midsole. And I really like doing this with the airbrush, but also with the hand brush method, it works as well if you are taping the upper. Instead of having to pull it back with your hand, which you might do naturally, but this really helps with the airbrush method so I can just get all of this midsole exposure and make sure I get full coverage on that. So this method would work a lot better if I had better clamps instead of just these right here. But all I do is just find where it sticks out the most and just compress. And you can do this toward the top of the shoe. Just make sure that you don't clamp it too hard that you compress the upper and leave a mark. This might leave a little bit of an indentation, but we can definitely work that out when we're done or it should just fade naturally. So you can see how that exposes this whole entire side right here as opposed to this one where it's still hanging out over the sides. So this can make things a little bit weird when you're taping, but just work around it and trust me, it pays off. It saves a lot of time and you don't really have to go back and do any touch-ups because you're gonna get the whole entire midsole covered. So now we'll go ahead and simply just tape up the uppers here. And like I said, this can get in the way and get a little bit weird. If I had the clamps that were just small, that would work a lot better, but this is all I have, so we're gonna make do. So again, just working around the clamp, I know it gets in the way a little bit, but this is the best way to really get a really clean line. You don't really have to do any touch-ups at all at the end, and you're ultimately going to get a more smooth, even coat across the midsole instead of having to go touch it up, and it's just never the same if you do it right the first time. So you see I put the shoe in some weird angles because it was tough to work around the clamp, but if you're not filming or trying to show people what you're doing, it's a little bit easier, but again, those small clamps that literally just clamp down in one area would be super helpful. So let's go ahead and grab this Jacquard Airbrush White and this little cap. And we'll go ahead and fill it up with some paint, put that in there, and we'll go ahead and attach this hose on here. This is the uh, water, you can check it out below. Turn on the compressor, the compressor's expensive, you don't even want to know the price. And we'll go ahead and attach this and let the focus hit that shoe for a nice transition. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do our first coat, and again with an airbrush, you want to make sure that you're still doing light coats. I see too many people go ham with the airbrushes because they're like, there's so much coverage really just still light coats as if you were hand painting. And you wanna make sure you go really light on that first coat to get a really good base coat because everything else is gonna be built off that. If you get a really heavy base coat, you're definitely gonna get some cracking. You need to lower the PSI a little bit. So normally I'd have the PSI up a little bit more for a good solid spray. However, in this case, uh, I don't have the upper taped up all the way, so I wanna make sure I don't get any overspray. So in the beginning here, I want to go really slow because you guys honestly aren't going to see much and that's the whole point I want to get across is that you need to do such a thin base coat that it, you really can't even tell, especially with white on a white midsole, that there is paint going on. So just go super smooth, super light, starting off the shoe, finishing off the shoe, get a clean, clean stroke basically as opposed to, you know, hand brushing where you don't want brush strokes. This one you're going to have hard stops and hard starts. So you want to eliminate that by dragging all the way off the shoe and starting off the shoe. I'll just go ahead and speed through this as it's going to get a little repetitive, but again, just light coats, and then we'll use the fan method to let those dry here in a sec. And this video is not sponsored by Vornado, however, your guys' fans are amazing, so if you do want to sponsor me, that would be sick. 
This just happens to be the fan that I have and we're using the fan dry method. If you're not aware of that, you can check out a couple videos where we compared the airbrush and the hand painted method to why we're drying it this way. I let it sit for about five to 10 minutes between each coat. So we're gonna go ahead and start on the second coat here. I believe this is second, possibly third. We end up with four total coats and I'll show you guys an overall picture when we're done, but same process, light coats, let them dry in front of the fan about 10 minutes. I'm not gonna keep showing you the process every single time. I'm just gonna kind of time lapse through it give you guys the rough outlay and let you kind of play with it because that's half the fun and just learning from your mistakes and going from it but light coats let them dry in front of a fan or with a hair dryer you don't want high heat you want a lot of air movement So by now, 12 hours has passed since shooting that last clip to this clip. We ended up with four coats total to get a full base and it looks really good to me. I'll go ahead and show you guys here. You can just tell by the look of the midsoles that they're full and it's really not a one size fits all for this type of project. It really is just how it looks to your eye. You need to be honest with yourself and see if that actually does look full. So if I just kind of look around the shoe like this, I can see in the air unit that things look really solid. I can see along the back, there's no red, there's no bleeding. I also did a really good job of taping up with midsole magic to make sure I didn't smear any of that fire red down onto that white, because that will add more coats. You can also do a base coat of um, like a lighter red shade, maybe like a pink or a hot pink or something like that that's a little more thick, as this fire red is a little bit runny. Um, the viscosity, or I'm not sure the exact wording, I'm probably just confusing myself at this point. But now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the fire red. We're gonna airbrush it, and I know I'm using Jacquard for the base and Angelus, I've done it before works fine as long as you prep and you do the process correctly you're not going to have any issues the reason i choose to use fire red is just because it's pre-mixed but this color actually is not right out of the bottle so i actually already have some a little bit mixed up in here and i'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of tooth in to thin that out and go ahead and strain it since angelus does get really chunky that's why i really like jacquard airbrush but i don't have enough jacquard colors to go ahead and mix that fire red or else i probably would just go ahead and use that so i just have an empty two ounce container i really just use fire red play around with a little orange and a little white and take some tooth in and pour it in if you're looking for exact one to one or whatever ratio i don't know i really i'm like a bad cook i just eyeball it and i go ahead and strain that in here i'm gonna time lapse this because this takes forever if you've ever tried to thin out angela's paint it starts going pretty quick here but towards the end it slows down so i speed it up quite a bit to get all that out there and then we'll go ahead and just attach the airbrush and get ready to spray here so every time I do a repaint, I go ahead and do just the one tape method. It's really just one long piece and I stretch it around. However, for the air bubbles, I actually just take a little piece of tape and just line it along the edge right here to make sure I don't get any spray in there and really make sure that's taped up. With the airbrush, you just want to make sure you're coming directly on when you're spraying and not going up and underneath or down or at an angle because that will slip underneath there. So we really need to make sure this is a clean tape job across to make sure we get that line. So we really need to focus on spraying straight onto the midsole to make sure we get that clean line right here. So I could go in detail about this probably on a whole nother video. So if you guys are interested in that or you haven't seen that on twitch.tv when we were live streaming, I literally try and just use one piece of tape all the way around. So this just shows me doing this front edge right here up to the air bubble, but I'll literally take one long piece for the rest of the midsole and run it all the way around. My thinking is that the edge of the tape is already straight. So why would you try and use 20 different pieces of tape to try and create one straight line when the tape edge already is a straight line? So you can see that long piece of tape I just pulled off. I literally just pulled that all the way around the side, creating that straight line for me. And again, don't fight against the tape. The tape is made to be straight. So just do one straight line. So this shows me go ahead and getting into the first coats. Again, same thing with the white base coats. You wanna do really light. I see so many people make videos for Instagram just to get views because it looks cool of going super heavy with the paint because yeah, it looks cool going on, but that's not practical. It's not durable. It's not wearable. So this might even be a little heavier than I should have done. Um, but just to give you an idea of the coverage and the light coats, that's about full right there. And I'll go ahead and show you on the back here as well. And just making sure that you're hitting all the angles. So aiming down right here, I do along the top just to make sure I get all the way down into that seam. And this right here is actually after two coats. So this will be the third coat being applied just to give you guys kind of a reference of how they should look as you move along the midsole repaint. So again here, this is the other shoe and I believe this is the third coat as well that we are applying. And you can see there's a little bit of white along the top, so I'll try and focus on aiming down with the airbrush and then aiming straight at that air unit to make sure we don't bend any of that paint or spray at an angle up into the air unit. Just really want to make sure we get full coverage, especially by the second coat, you should start to be getting rid of most of that white. And then the third coat, you should probably have almost all of that white completely gone.
Then here's me just spraying at angles to get underneath all those edges. And then here's the final result. We end up with four coats. It's nice and full. Um, I really, I usually just use the matte finisher on these because it looks natural and I use treehouse matte finish. I'll go ahead and link that down below. You can also use Krylon. You can check that out in the description if you need it. So that's gonna do it for these 06 Fire Red 3s. You can see I'll show a couple before and after here. The white looks much better on the upper because we did a deep cleaning. The laces look 10 times better. We also did a color match on the midsole and I also noticed that the Jumpman in the air, again, he did not pay for this. So I just did one light coat over that just to kind of bring that together because those were really faded. You can see some parts were completely missing and the color just didn't look right because it had faded and gotten dirty over time. These are pretty routine. You can see the air units look super clean. Um, everything just came out really good. There's no, really no big surprises. And that clamp was a really big tip because if there's one thing I want you guys to focus on, it's probably that for today. And I want to take these videos small step by small step. I see a lot of people doing full tutorials. That's a lot of information to take in. So just one thing at a time and make sure we focus on that. We learn it, apply it, get used to it, it becomes second nature, and then you can start to add these other things. So if you guys have any questions about anything I did on these that I didn't cover or go into detail, just let me know in the comments. The more I see it in the comments from a bunch of people, the more likely I am to do it because I know you guys want that information. I want to get that to you. And one thing I didn't do on this YouTube video that I actually am uploading to Instagram TV because I've never done it. Honestly, I don't really get it. I just, I would rather go to YouTube to look for something instead of getting fed something on Instagram TV. But I showed how I clean these toe caps. That's a really good tip. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm on Instagram at Raleigh Restorations. I'll just put it down here in the corner as well. You can follow me there. And if you guys did find this helpful and you're using me as a resource, it would help me out a ton if you guys just like, comment, subscribe. If you guys are wondering about some of the stuff that I use in the video, I tried to get a good list of things and I linked them down below. Most of them are from Amazon because that's where I usually do most of my shopping. It's just easy and convenient. You get it in one or two days, sometimes an hour, depending where you're living. You can check those out down below as well as some of our products, our social media, how to get in contact with us, and a bunch of other good stuff. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Logic. I got a date with destiny. My heart says yeah, but can't convince the rest of me. I tried so hard to make it with no recipe. My selfish ways caught up and got the best of me. I need redemption, no need to mention my past. Cause all that matters now is bigger than diamonds and cash.